Okay. All right. So, yeah, we're going to keep working on some people were here before some of the other uh, arpeggio practices I did. And now I know I have some new people, especially some classical people, too. Um, so the approach to arpeggios is way different for fiddle players than, than classical players. And, um, and again, I have a, a wide assortment of people of levels, okay? So um, hopefully you can find something that you can latch on to. We're going to, so we've worked on G chord, D chord, and A chord. And um, uh, I also talked about finger shapes, actually. So like the G chord or the D chord or the A chord, we could do open G. Just to review that. So there's zero, two, or fourth fret, open D, and then fifth fret, open G. Yeah, so, so there's that. Um, uh, that's the open shape or the fourth finger shape. And the reason I call it fourth finger shape is play your open D. Let's do a D arpeggio. D, F sharp, A. And I'm only doing one octave on purpose. So I call it the fourth finger shape because that D you could play with your fourth finger. If you wanted to use no open strings, it would be four. Because if we want to move up the neck, that's kind of nice to know that there's your arpeggio. So there's your open finger or fourth finger shape, okay? We can also do it on A. We can do A. Or fourth finger. Fourth finger. Yeah, so there's your open or fourth finger shape. Notice so you're always doing three, uh, sorry, two, four. Three. Okay. All right. So then we also worked on the third finger shape last time on the G chord. So we use this G, which starts on your third finger and goes three, one, three, low two. Oh, that's third fret right there. So you're doing fifth fret, second fret, fifth fret, and then um, a low second finger, which is third fret. Okay. So that's, that's what you want to do there. Okay, so there's the shapes we've used. We're going to go on to the key of C right now. And so C can also be done using your third finger shape. But we're going to start down here on your G string. So the C on the G string to E, G, and then C. So it's the same shape as the one we just did. So... Okay, so there's one shape you can use. Okay, so I'm going to put on the drone again. We're going to play with the drone, okay? But, um, and again, you guys are going to be up to your, up on your own a little bit on this, but um, if you can only get these down right now, just focus on this one octave. That's great, okay? But I also want to move on to the second finger shape right now. So you might want to practice this instead. So the second finger shape, and this is going to be a low second finger or third fret on the A string. So we're going to do this C, open E. Again, low second finger or third fret. And if you want to stretch to get that C, that's, um, what fret would that be? Eighth, I think. And then third, open E. And then third again. So... And I'm, I'm going to have you stretch to get that C in as opposed to change position, okay? But actually, you could if you want to change position. You could do this. This is the fiddler's way, I think, is you're going to put your first... No, let's not do that. Never mind. I'm not going to talk about that. But if you know what I'm talking about, you can do that. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. So, so those, those are the shapes because I just want to work on shapes. So you can either work on the third finger shape down here... Or the second finger shape here. So when I put the drone on, what you're going to do is um, I'll give you some thoughts and then I'm going to leave you on your own. I might go more than six minutes because the drone goes for six minutes. But um, you want to not just do that. Maybe you want to do... And I'm 
I'm gonna stay away from that high fourth finger just to just to make it easier. But you can do some slides. Something like that, or you could do uh, different rhythms. So I'll give you, I'll feed you a few of those. I'm going to stay up in that position, um, but um, then I'm going to leave you on your own to do some. So let me just check the sound on this first. Uh, here's the drone. Can you guys hear that okay? Yeah, you can hear that. And then you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear that sound okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're just gonna start by playing really slow and relaxed. Uh, you know, just a, I don't know, holding the note for a little bit to get in tune. So here we go. So C.
keep playing. <laughs> it's only six minutes. You can do it. Be creative. Okay, so six minutes, yeah, so it's really good um, to force yourself to play through all of that because it really makes you become more creative. You're going to get bored with what you're playing and you're going to have to do something different. I, I got the mandolin out, Adriana, and I'm not sure on the one you're playing how easy this is, but um, you could actually do things like hold the chord and go, like do kind of picking patterns like... I'm just doing three three strings. I'm going. That's the D string A, E, back to. You could do something like that. You can make up your own thing. And then you could put this finger down just so you know. Even though you're not playing that in the, this C chord or this C chord, you could know that these are in there. You know. So that's a good way to practice these kind of arpeggios on the on the mandolin. Um, so we'll do we'll do more of that. I'll give you some more ideas tomorrow uh, um, on that. Okay, so now we're gonna go and uh, put these into context a little bit. So we're gonna go back to the old "Will the circle be unbroken?" Um, in the key of G. So I'm gonna share my screen so you can see this. Okay, so this this is "Will the circle be unbroken?" And these are the chords. I just have to check the tempo. This might not be slow enough right now. Um, so one, two, three, four. Maybe like that. Okay, so what you're going to do here is uh, to start out with, and so Adriana, you can just strum the chords if you want to, but it might be good for you to do some arpeggiation playing single notes at a time for on the mandolin. Um, for um, for the fiddle players, what I'd like you to practice is um, for the G chord. I want you to practice finding that G. Now, if you can just get to that G, that's fine. Um, because and and you can't belittle this because for fiddle players to do chords is really it's it's a it's it doesn't come to our brains as easily. Our, we, we're, we're a linear instrument to sort of think chords. So it's really different. So if you can only just get to that G, and then you're gonna go to this C though, the second finger C, and then back to G, and then D, open D. So there's only one quick D here at the end, okay? So you can start by that by doing that, okay? If you only get this, you know, if you only get what's called the root note or the name of the chord, that's good, good start. Okay, then maybe the second time around you want to add in um, like um, the next note. So if we're doing G, B, G, B, G, B, G, B, and when we go to C, we're gonna go C. And back to G. Okay, now again, every I got, I've got a lot of different levels here, so you're gonna try to take it whatever you want. If you can do things like this, do do that. Okay. So right now, I'm gonna keep it simple, but if you can play fancier, then do that. Okay. We're just gonna play the arpeggios in time to the chord changes, so you can watch the chord changes. Um, so here we go. Uh, One. Two, two, three, four. Oh.
Um, I have it on auto speed up, so I'm sorry. I'm going to take that off, disable auto speed up, um, and try it. We're going to do it again. So, so now again, uh, if you want to just do rhythms and add a third note, we're going to just do that again. Okay, so here we go. And notice I'm putting some slides in. We don't because we don't really want to sound like a classical player. You know, that would be pretty boring. And you can change, or you could jump around. But you can only use the notes in the chord, okay? So here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I picked this song because a lot of people know it, and hopefully you all know it kind of at least. It's, you know, I am well, the circle, we, we are broken, by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. And I sing it because I want to point out that if you actually did the melody to this song, you would only use mostly chord tones. So if you can get chord tones down and, and uh, hear where the chords are changing, you can then pick up the melody easier too. So like on this song, it starts like that. So the only note that's not in the G chord is the E, it goes. So if we took that out. Those are all part of the G chord, and then we go to the C. back on the D, G chord again. D chord. G. Okay, so all of those notes, I kind of dumbed down the melody a little bit. I took out the non-chord tones. Okay, so that melody is right there in those chords. So if you can get chords down, you can then help you get melodies down, like we did the fiddle tune last time, uh, um, Soldier's Joy. Um, we're not going to do fiddle tunes today, but we'll do them tomorrow. So um, so I'm going to just pick another song right here. Let's do You Are My Sunshine, because a lot of people know that song. Again, I'm just trying to pick up songs that a lot of people know. But you can do this to anything. Um, this is a, a, called Strum Machine, this little app. Okay, we're in the key of G here. Notice the same chords, G, C, and D. Um, <clears throat> it almost looks like the same song, doesn't it? <laughs> There's just a quick D there. It's not quite the same, but it's close. So let's do... We're going to do the same thing to You Are My Sunshine. We're just going to play chord tones, okay? If you can figure out the melody without the, with, with taking out the missing, the chord, if you can figure out the melody without playing um, notes that are not in the chords, you can try that. But Okay, so here we go. We're going to play this around a few times. Let me see. I'll slow this one down, too. Um, ready? One, two, two three, three, four.
what I just did. So I'm playing, I'm basically playing the note, the root note of the chord. So I'm, when it says G, I'm playing a G. And I'm going, I'm putting the rhythm, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when stars are gray. You'll never know, you'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my time. That would be a fine solo to that song. Okay, so you just play the chord tones, but you can put more if you want. And try to not play the melody if you know the melody, because, I mean, uh, that's the easy route for fiddle players, but we want to learn to get chords. Okay, so here we go again. Uh, you're on your own for the One, first. Ready? Two, three. Yeah, so now going back to the melody again, so like uh, if you listen here, um, if I use the first note of the chord, the G, and the third degree, or the second note, the B, G, and D, so listen, I'm going to play just the G, the uh, first degree and the third degree, and you'll see how the melody starts to come into the One, play here. Two, three. fifth on the D chord because that was a part of the melody but notice see the melody is really there and again um, it's the purpose of doing this activity is to train your ear to hear chords so that when you come to a melody you don't know you can pick it up but I just want to show you that the chord tones are right there okay, let's pick another one uh, let's go to uh, let's see what I have how about ripple um, just to pick a different style here and for those of you who are in the fiddle ensemble we did ripple in D but we're going to do ripple in G which is the original key so here we go Oh my God, look at these chords. Don't they look very similar to what we just played? Oh my God, do they just have a little bit different, you know, they just come at different times a little bit, okay? So, but notice this D is not till the end again. Um, I, I didn't do this on purpose. I just picked songs that I thought people might know. So anyway, here we go again. We're, we're actually, we're only gonna do the verse to Ripple because we don't wanna get into this whole A minor thing right now. So I'm gonna just highlight the verse. We're gonna do the verse over and over again. So, uh, Da, 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 da. So that's the melody, but um, we're just playing some chord stuff, okay? Um, uh, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs>
up. Yeah. yeah. So notice, so the melody, the melody I just played was the melody without only using chord tones. Okay. So try it again, though. Just try to play now and try to find some notes in those chords that are close to the close to the melody. If you know the melody. If you don't, just play the chord tones. So here we go again. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, so there, we're, so we're really training our ear to hear the chords and to, um, uh, so see arpeggio practice is a lot different for fiddle players and for violin players. It's still good to get your fingers wrapped around those. Okay, any questions on that today? Um, we'll put it to some fiddle tunes tomorrow. We'll go back and we'll do some licks too. Um, so, questions? All good? Okay, so I'll send you guys videos of these and... Um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Let me stop recording. Doo -doo. All right.